Hello and welcome to another Motion Builder tutorial. Today we're going to look at how to use Motion Builder's control rig to edit the walk cycle we created in the last video. In this video I'll show you how IK Blend works and when to use it, some quick and easy fixes you can make in the F-curves window, and what pinning does and why it sometimes doesn't seem to be doing it. When you start using Motion Builder's control rig, there are three things you need to understand that make it easier to use. So first thing is the IK Blend settings, the second thing is the pin settings, and the third thing are the body parts mode. So the first one we're going to look at is the IK Blend settings. So if we just come across here and look at this amazing piece of animation I've created. In this take we've just got the contact poses at each end of the walk. So this is just to demonstrate how these limbs move. So the first thing to understand about the control rig is there's actually two rigs running here. So you have our FK rig which is the yellow skeleton here and then we have our IK rig which are these spherical joints here. So what Motion Builder does is as you're working it does a really good job of keeping these two together. So if I slide this along now you can see these two skeletons are moving in exactly the same place. But if we come back to the first frame come down to our control rig, we just select it, we come into the properties here, you can actually turn off this align control rig and the double solving. If we move between keyframes you can see our control rigs start to separate. So you can see on this passing pose, so we have our IK rigs here and our FK rigs down here. If we put on motion trails, so what's happening here is you've got a keyframe on this contact pose and this contact pose. You can see the IK control rig interpolates between those two positions in a straight line. If we select our FK skeleton, straight away you can see this interpolates in a nice arc, and the same on the hands. If we select our left wrist, you can see between there and there it moves in a straight line. If we select the FK hand, you can see we've got this nice arc on it. So IK Blend allows you to tell Motion Builder which control rig to use when it's interpolating from one keyframe to the next. So by default, the feet are always set to match IK. But if I turn this off, you'll see the white skeleton will now move and come down and align with the FK skeleton. And if we switch that back, you'll see it move back up. So the general rule is, if you want something to be moving in a straight line or fixed in place like this foot, you want to have your IK blend turned on. But if you're animating something that swings or you want it to move in a nice arc, you want to make sure your IK is turned off and you're editing on the FK skeleton so you get this nice swing. So now we'll just come back down into our control rig and turn on align control rig and double solving. The other important thing to understand about how the two control rigs work is when it comes to editing keyframes on them. So if we come down here into our F curves and just have a look at this right arm. If we play this animation back, you can see here there's a slight kick on a hand as though it's hitting her legs. I just slow that down and see it a bit clearer. If we just play that back, just here there's a slight kick as though she's actually hitting her leg. So if we wanted to bring this arm closer in, what we could do is come in here and grab our control rig, switch into local mode, grab our rotation and rotate our hand in. Or what we could do is edit the curves that we've already got created on our animation layer one. But before you do that, there's a couple of things you need to understand about how these two control rigs work when they've got keyframes on them and how the IK blend affects them. So if we select our IK shoulder and come down into controls, into rotation, you can see we've got keyframes on our rotation values. So if we wanted to rotate this arm closer into a body, we should be able to select the Y channel. Frame that up, just zoom out a little bit. We should be able to select those two keyframes and then when we move them in here, we'd expect to see this moving now. And the reason we don't see any movement is because this is actually using our FK rig to rotate the arm. So if we were to turn on reach IK, what we're actually doing now is to tell Motion Builder that we want to use the IK rig to animate this shoulder. So if we grab this rotation channel again, move it, we can see it starts to move. But as we saw earlier, because this is actually swinging, what we want to use is the FK skeleton. So what we're going to do is turn the IK blend off and we're going to use the FK skeleton. So to edit the FK skeleton, you need to select these sticks or these straight lines. So now when we come down here and select our Y channel and select the keys, don't forget because this is a looping animation we need to make sure we've got our first and our last keyframe selected to make sure our loop pose at either end stay the same. And we can just zoom in a little bit 
and then click in between these two markers and if we raise our keyframe value up you can see our hand starts to move down so you can bring that in a little bit closer and then we're just going to rotate this hand around so you want to rotate this in X so another handy tip here is the amount you're zoomed in on the keyframes when you've got them selected determines how much they move so if you've got this zoomed all the way out to 100 if you're trying to make tiny adjustments on this they're going to be really big it's going to be really difficult to make small adjustments but if you zoom in not quite that close but if you zoom in so you've got sort of if you can just see one or two in the values then when you select here it's much easier to make smaller adjustments you can zoom out a little bit further just bring that hand round hide our skeleton controlling into perspective view just hit F to frame up on that so now we can just see this hand and align it with the leg so it might just straighten that wrist up a little bit select our Z just zoom out a little bit and we're going to rotate this out a little bit so now we can come up to our FK shoulder again and then just rotate that round in Y come back down here and look at our hand you can just click between that and then just drag it in so it's just touching the leg so now if we come back into our front view you can see now we've brought this arm in and then where it hits the leg just at the end of the loop you can see it just get this nice little contact it bounces off a leg so the next edit we're going to make is going to be on the IK skeleton so what you want to do here is just look at moving this foot a little bit across you look at this first frame which is a little bit off balance this feels like a foot should be a little bit further across so this time we want to be editing the IK skeleton so we're going to select our IK foot come down into the F curves so you can tell this if you hit T for translation and go into F6 in global you can figure out which axis you need to edit so we want to move our foot this way so you want to be editing the X translation so you can select that over here and again we want to select all our keys and move them along so you click between the two white markers and just move that down slightly that will just move that foot across so it's a little bit more in line with the center of a body if we play that back now we can see we just moved a foot a little bit closer so the reason we're using the IK control rig to fix the feet is if we come to this last frame here where this foot interpolates between these two frames if we use the IK let me just zoom in a little bit if I use the IK control rig to solve the position of this foot it's going to keep it locked in place but you can see here if we switch if we turn off the IK rig and switch to the FK you can see the foot starts to move up and down so the heels in the right place where it contacts but then you can see it goes below the ground and then comes back up we get this soft spongy motion in the foot that we don't want because if we turn our IK back on you can see this foot stays nice and planted and solid on the floor so as I showed at the start the main rule to remember is if something's moving in a straight line or you want it to stay planted most of the time you want to be editing on the IK skeleton if you've got something swinging like the arms then you want to be editing the FK skeleton now, the last thing to remember is you've got the right control rig selected when you come to edit the keyframes down here so now we made those two adjustments using the control rig the next thing we're going to have a look at is pinning before you start editing the mocap you really want to have a clear idea in your head what changes you want to make and why the worst thing you can do is start making changes and just keep moving things around until you sort of find something that you think you're happy with because you'll never find that you'll keep moving little bits and changing bits here and moving bits there and you'll never get something so it's really important when you start editing motion capture to have a clear idea in your head what you want the final result to be so what I'm going to do for this one if we control A and just show a skeleton so I'm going to do to this animation is just make a small change just to make you feel a bit more confident the moment is a the back slightly arched, the head's a little bit forward. I just want to make it feel a bit more confident. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to show you how pinning works. So first thing you're going to do is come in here and we're going to straighten this neck up. So I select a head control. If I move a head around now, you can see this the whole body moves. The head's changing rotation, the body's moving around. 
So this isn't what we want. So what we actually want to do is move the head around but only affect the head and the neck. So at the moment we're in full body, so that means if I move this controller, this controller is going to affect the full body. If I switch to body part, that means it's only going to affect the part that's selected. It's quite tricky to see, but if you select the joint, you can see it just highlights the chain that it's actually going to affect when you do this edit. So you can see I'm just changing to white. So if I select the head now, you can see if I move the head around, it only affects the head. So if I want to straight this neck up, the problem I've got now is every time I move the head, the rotation changes on the head. So if we look in the front view, just hide the skeleton, I'm actually happy with the angle that our head's at. So if I come back into the right view, what I can do now is I can use pin rotation to pin the rotation of the head so that it stays in position. So now if I move the head around, you can see she stays looking forwards. If we just control A to unhide the skeleton again. So what I can do now is rotate this around and just straighten this neck up. And you can see she stays facing forwards. So now I've got a bit straighter neck. We can keyframe that and go back into our poses. We'll just create a new pose for this. And we'll go to our end frame. Let's zoom out a little bit. And then apply that pose. Keyframe that. So now when she's walking, head's a little bit, she feels a little bit more upright. So the next thing we're going to do is look at straightening this spine. So the first thing we're going to try is selecting the spine and then rotating it. As you can see, if you rotate this spine, even though we're only in body parts mode and it should only be affecting the spine body part section of the character, the head and the arms are actually moving. That's because they're children of this spine. So if we change the position of this top joint up here, it's going to change the position of the rest of the character. So what we need to do is find a way of pinning this in place. So another way to think of pinning is to put things in world space. So some character setups, if you think if you pin the translation and rotation on this, it's a bit like setting them into world space. So now if we rotate this chest, you can see there's a lot less movement. Motion builder trying to keep that chest in place and just move the spine around, but you can see we're still getting movement on the head and the arms. That's because we're in body part mode. Now even though we've got our head pinned and we're only in body part mode and it should only be affecting the spine part of the character because the other joints are children of that of the spine they're actually going to rotate as well and because we're only working in body parts mode it's not picking up the pinning on the head so if we switch to full body mode so if we select our spine now and rotate it you can see it's just the bottom part of our character that moves this whole top stays locked so we don't really want that effect what we actually want is to we just reset that. What we want is to keep the position of the chest, but we don't want to fix the rotation. Then in the hips, we want to keep the position of the hips, but we want to allow them to rotate freely. So now if we select our chest and rotate that around, you can see we're now getting a much better shape from the spine, but we still get in rotation in those arms. If we bring a chest out, you can see this brings her arms forward, so that's going to affect the way they swing. So if you undo that, so what we want to do now is select the two shoulder joints and pin the rotation on the shoulders. So this is a bit like putting them into world space. So now they'll only move with world space rather than with our rig. So then if we select our spine again, just make sure we're back at the original position. If we rotate our spine now, you can see now our head stays looking forward. The rotation on our arms remains the same. We get this nice straightening of the spine. So now we can go ahead and just straighten that spine. And then we can set a keyframe. So that's going to key our whole body. And then we can come down here and select our chest pose. And update that. And then go to our last frame. Now because we're going to apply a pose with full body turned on, we need to make sure our match options are set correctly. So we're going to match translation, we're going to turn off X so that we're just matching in Z and we're going to turn off rotation so that our rotation comes from our pose again and then we're going to select the hips and we're going to double click our pose to paste it, you can see just a spine moves there and we can key that, so now if we 
look at our animation in the side view, you can see our character is much more upright, much more sort of confident looking. So we can check what this looks like. So this is our before, you can see she's much more hunched over her heads forward and after. A much more sort of confident walk. And if we look at our front view, we can check everything's still looping. You can see there's no pops. We've got that nice little hit on the hand there on the leg. Everything's still looping perfectly. So I hope this has helped you understand a little more about how Motion Builder's control rig works. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment sections below. And don't forget to like this video if you found it useful. And subscribe if you aren't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.